Do you think that you need to be Logan Paul or Mr. Beast in order to generate money on YouTube? You do not. I know this because last year, in my first full year on YouTube, I was able to generate six figures worth of revenue despite my channel still having only a couple thousand subscribers. And I did it with a business model that most people don't even think about when they use YouTube. So for anyone who's watching this and thinking that you need to have this massive audience, you simply don't. So which are the business models that actually can get the most potential out of YouTube for even the smallest audience size? Well, that's what I wanna share with you today in this video. The biggest mistake that most people make when they're trying to think about YouTube as a potential source of income is that they are thinking too small. They're thinking about these income sources that require an insane amount of effort and a huge audience to make work. As an example, ad revenue. There's so many people out there and you can see this documented. Tons of people sharing essentially their AdSense revenue for a full year. They'll tell you that even with 10,000, 50,000 subscribers, they're only getting a thousand or $2,000 a month on YouTube. What is a pretty big audience and you're only getting paid like $2,000 per month? That's insane. Or Patreon where at best, you're getting paid $5 per sign up to your Patreon or even merchandise where maybe you are able to get $50 a t-shirt, but then you gotta factor in shipping costs and you're designing your t-shirts and putting in all this work, maybe just to make a couple thousand dollars a month. So the short answer to this question is that you need to actually be running a business where you have some sort of higher ticket offer that you can sell. Now, what can that look like? Here are a couple examples, right? You could be a coach, maybe some sort of fitness coach that sells private one-on-one -on -one fitness sessions online for hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Or maybe you run some sort of marketing agency where you're able to charge two, three, four thousand dollars per month to your corporate B2B clients because you're helping them with their social media or with their lead generation. Now, the reason why it's so important to be able to be selling these higher ticket offers using YouTube is because this means that even with a small audience, you don't need really that many of those members to ultimately convert into a paying customer for you to be able to generate lots and lots of revenue. And let's look at my business as an example. We run a consulting business, and on average, our pricing ranges from two and a half thousand all the way up to 15,000, depending on the type of work that we're doing for our customers. So in just the first year on YouTube, because of the fact that we do have these higher ticket prices, we were able to bring home just 27 or so customers, yet we were able to close over $100,000 of deals specifically using YouTube. It's a whole lot easier for you to be able to make six figures of income if you're selling something that's between three to $10,000. And this is why even at a smaller total audience count, because you can look at my audience, it's only 2.7 thousand subscribers as of me filming this today, but we're able to actually increase the amount of money we're able to earn per subscriber because of the nature of how we're actually utilizing YouTube as a sales funnel to sell what is a larger priced product. That's what I would recommend you to do as well. Now, obviously this only works for certain types of businesses. If you're just trying to be a creative person or a vlogger, this might be a little bit outside of what you're able to do. But if you're a knowledge-based YouTuber, and this can run the gamut, right? Obviously B2B works great. If you're someone like me who's working with lead generation or marketing services, I've seen other companies out there that are maybe providing advice on YouTube about how to hire people, how to be a good leader, or how to optimize your taxes so that you're able to pay less. I think it's very clear as to how all of those types of channels can then turn into either consulting services or even done for you services where you can definitely charge a lot of money. But it doesn't necessarily have to be so B2B or bland, right? Like there's a million people out there that are doing relationship coaching or health and fitness coaching or teaching someone how to play an instrument or a sport. And you probably can't charge quite as high for those particular categories, but you can sell info products, you can sell group coaching, and all of that can still be priced at a point where you can look at it being insanely profitable. So that's something that I'd encourage you to do as well. When you're creating your channel, think about not just the creative element of it, or about how many subscribers you can accumulate because that'll help your ad revenue. Think about, is there anything that I can actually create on the back end that in and of itself can be sold to my audience? Examples of trying to capture a higher overall revenue per subscriber using your YouTube might be Alex Hormozzi. 
Everyone should know him at this point. He's probably like the king of business YouTube today. But if you look at his channel and where he gets his revenue from, it's not just from the fact that he has probably a lot of ads. Like certainly he's making a lot of ads because he has a large audience, especially an audience that is very focused on earning income, right? But really he's trying to generate money by building trust with his audience and then finding the individuals in his audience that he could actually invest into and own a part of their company. And of course, once he owns a part of their company, he's able to capture a much larger slice of the overall pie, much higher upside than if he was just to try to earn income from ads. And obviously on my front, I'm using YouTube as a funnel to try to capture more sales calls so that I can ultimately close consulting clients and agency clients for my business. And just as an example, because I do want to give you an idea of how even creative YouTube channels can ultimately create these products. I have these buddies of mine. They actually have a channel called Canto Mando. And initially they were just 100% entertainment. They would make these funny memes and sketches about uh, Asian culture. And certainly that did well. Just like anyone else who has a channel with a bunch of followers, you'd eventually accumulate ad revenue. And maybe you can sell some t-shirts and whatnot. And certainly they did that. You can see it, it's all public for you to see on their channel. But over time, they realized, just like any other creator realizes, that, you know what, making money on ads just isn't very efficient. So eventually they started selling courses and coaching. For them, because of the fact that their audience was predominantly Asian, they started just teaching people how to speak Chinese better. So they definitely had to get a bit more creative because it wasn't clear and obvious as to what type of course they could sell given that they were an entertainment channel, but they eventually did find a thing that did make sense for their audience. And now I believe it's actually one of their more effective income sources for the overall business. So this just goes to show this concept in practice. Anytime you take your destiny under your own control by creating your own products, that's when you actually turn into a real company that can maximize the potential of YouTube.